partnered by Times Influence. Hello and welcome to India's finest educators. This week we come to you from Bengaluru's Vogue Institute of Fashion Technology. Let's find out what makes Vogue the mecca of fashion in the south of India. Vogue's mission is to provide customized academic programs through professional partnerships in order to hone the skills, nurture creativity and inculcate ethical value through a holistic approach to help their students make a mark globally. Vogue's fashion program began with less than 10 students. But today, it proudly hosts over 500 students in its premises, enrolled in about seven different courses. Let's hear it from the students about their life on campus. As I was doing my research for the colleges and fashion, I came, uh, came across the co this college and I got really good reviews about this one and that's the reason I'm here. Um, we don't have any pressure of, uh, according to studies, we have the <coughs> They leave us like you too should be creative. Uh, they'll be like free mind. They don't uh, pressure anything to do work and all. The campus is made by the students, and the students here they are very cheerful. This college, when we talk about extracurricular activities, there are lots of activities happening around. We have ethnic day where people dress up in their own religion, custom wear, and we get to know each other. Institution that is called. The incubation center is required for them. So we organize uh, some experts from the CII Bangalore branch and some other confederation, uh, Karnataka Chambers of Commerce. So the people are coming over here and they are giving some sort of uh, a training program, motivational talk, support financially as, as well as uh, technical support for them. As a result, uh, they'll be able to uh, start, make small startup their own as well as uh, uh, sometimes uh, if they want to uh, select a particular organization to become an uh, employee also, we will train them with respect to soft skill as well as with respect to communication skill and many angles we will try to see that depending upon the need basis then definitely they will see that uh, over a period of time they will see the growth in their, in their career. With a vision to usher professional education covering a gamut of activities in the realm of fashion and textiles, design and management, the Institute believes in developing design professionals with a dynamic global outlook and creative thinking. We got in touch with the Chairman of the Institute, Dr. M. M. Kariyappa. Mr. Karyapa, thank you for joining us on India's Finest Educators. To begin with, Vogue Institute of Fashion Technology is an ideal destination for students in, who want to pursue design. So talk to us about the foundation of this institute, the initial days and the vision behind this. Going back uh, <clears throat> into the year 1996, mm -hmm. uh, we started off with a very humble beginning uh, the idea behind that was uh, to create an institution of excellence. Let me also tell you as to how this idea came into my mind. I had seen it then. There were only two institutions. One was the National Institute of Design. The other one was uh, National Institute of Fashion Technology, Delhi. There were the only two institutions contributing to uh, to the students who would want to pursue a career in the field of art and design. Looking to the population of the country as a whole, I realized there's a, a great deal of population students would have been disappointed then, who couldn't have got into these institutions because the seats are limited. <laughs> That's when I thought there is a potential and uh, we need to, we could perhaps create an institution of uh, catering to art and design. 
And my next question, Mr. Karyapa, is about the infrastructure. Can you talk to us about the overall infrastructure on the campus? All these years, I've been concentrating, or most of my time, generating funds because we were, I'm not from a business background. I, we, we didn't have uh, the, the financial uh, uh, support that was needed. So everything was, uh, was a challenge. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had to create this uh, funding, putting uh, paisa after paisa, rupee after rupee. And uh, today, I must say proudly, looking back, it gives me so much of satisfaction. We created one of the finest uh, uh, state-of-the-art uh, college campus in the country today. On this note, Mr. Karyapa, we would like to bring in some reactions from your students. Take a look at what they have to say. A fashion college, we have a completely an organized campus where we have different uh, places to be. We have labs, we have classrooms, we have uh, canteens, we have libraries. So it's a, a place where we find lots of people from across the world and we get to interact with many people out here. And the energy which we feel here when people are gathered around here is very positive and enthusiastic. The campus is really eco-friendly and uh, the environment is really good. We have very positive vibes and uh, like very friendly friends. Everyone is like very friendly. Uh, teachers are teaching us really nice and uh, we really have a very good environment here. Classrooms. It's actually made by us because they let us paint the walls. Like as soon as you enter, we feel like it is ours because the creativity is shown here and we friends, we feel life and even the faculties help us. So, Mr. Karyapu, what are the growth opportunities offered to your faculty members? Can you talk about the same? We have various, uh, various uh, schemes where we have a continuous uh, faculty development program being conducted by experts mm -hmm. coming from uh, various sectors and we have uh, also, we have uh, encouraged our own faculties in terms of uh, giving leave and uh, uh, take initiative uh, in terms of the research uh, programs and stuff mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. uh, both financially and also uh, giving them leaves whenever they required for the research and development program. We also keep an eye, and some of them, those have excelled, we give them awards and uh, recognize uh, their talent and, uh, uh, and make them feel good about it. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have, of course, <clears throat> all of them are being covered uh, under uh, PO, PSI, medical insurance, so on and so forth. Uh, we are continuously working, uh, putting them at a comfort zone so that they are stay on and uh, uh, they continue with the, with the system. Well, on this note, Mr. Karyapa, we got in touch with some of your faculty members. Let's take a look at what they have to say. Management, it's just the backbone of our educational system. And uh, it, it, it gives, like, it sends us to lot many uh, development programs, seminars, so that we can enhance uh, both professional and personal uh, knowledge also, skills also. The faculties over here are very motivating and very caring. They give us the freedom to express our ideas. Like they don't restrict us to be creative. They don't ask us to like stop at one particular point. They'll allow us to explore more as much as we can. Teachers are really like friendly. They share with us, we can share our problem with them. Uh, they help in our, like we, if we, we are in any difficulties, they help us in our difficulties and we can share everything with them. Uh, we've been given an opportunity to attend uh, workshops and seminars that are conducted at different institutions and organizations uh, where it is basically skill development and also personal as well as uh, professional uh, you know, experience as well as exposure that we can implement it in our lives and also inculcate the same in the students uh, when we uh, you know, conduct classes for them. So. Uh, other training sessions are also done, especially for faculties, where we can uh, innovate new uh, teaching methods and techniques so that we can impart better learning and, you know, knowledge. Last but not the least, Mr. Karyapa, talk to us about the future roadmap that you have in plan for VOOC. <clears throat> well, we have come a long way, having started with uh, 
with four students. Uh, today, uh, I believe uh, achieving uh, uh, excellence is a continuous process. I have not finished yet. There is so much more to be done. Now, uh, we have taken uh, this institution at the international level too, in terms of having collaboration with some of the world's best uh, educational universities mm -hmm. abroad. Thank you so much, Mr. Karyapa, for taking out time and, and joining us on India's Finest Educators. Thank you so much, Sarah. Thanks a lot. My teachers guided me through an interview. So, giving the interview of the particular industry, I got through the interview and got placed in the particular industry. So, in all this thing, the teachers were the major support because of whom I could crack the interview. That's all we have on this segment of India's Finest Educators. On the other side, we will be back with another great institute. Stay tuned. Welcome back to India's Finest Educators. We come to you from a budding educational venture from the eminent GD Goenka Group. The GD Goenka University is an institution in Gurugram where education meets passion. Offering an expansive range of programs from diplomas to doctorates across various disciplines, the university follows an interdisciplinary research-based teaching under the able guidance of exceptionally qualified faculty members from recognized universities in India and abroad. In 2013, we thought of moving into a head to, you know, higher education. So now it's over 3,000 students that we have and more than 11 courses that we are, 11 schools that we are doing right now. So this is something that which really gives us peace, you know, and uh, that you are educating so many students so they can, they can become a, you know, big hero of the country and they can, you know, contribute something to the country also. So this is how, what was the thought behind it, that Einstein said once, you know, I don't teach student, but I create environment or a condition to teach them. So this is the motto that we started with. This Guru Gram based university is equipped with world-class facilities like a Wi-Fi enabled fully air-conditioned campus and state-of-the-art infrastructure. Let's hear it from the students about their life on campus. the ambience provided over here is very soothing and it has a positive aura. So never even once I've felt homesick. The hostel is really nice and everything is good. Completely love the vibe of the campus. Um, we have an amazing campus. It's so clean, so hygienic. We have state-of-the-art infrastructure. The teachers are amazing, uh, amazing crowd. I like it. I'm staying on campus. It is a very friendly environment. GDGU has actually been a home away from home for me. So I think the USP of GD Goenka University is their infrastructure compared to a lot of other universities from Delhi and NCR. GD Goenka has one of the best infrastructures. Best part is the kitchen is state of the art, which is why we I specifically chose this course. I do come by bus, and it's an AC bus, and it do have the water coolers and all in, inside. So we have all the facilities and sometimes the bus, if the bus gets delayed or something, uh, so we get exempted from the periods and we can enter late as it's a university bus. GD Goenka University aims to be an internationally recognized institution of higher learning through inclusive, innovative and value-based education. Let's hear more from Nipun Goenka, the Managing Director of the group. 
Nipun, welcome to India's finest educators. Thank you. To begin with, when the group was established in 1982, the focus was on real estate, hospitality and travel and tourism. But from the past 25 years, you guys have focused on education. What was your reasoning behind the same? Why did you decide to venture or you know, to start something in the field of education? Well, in the 90s, uh, the expectations of the Indian parent towards the quality of uh, education delivery and infrastructure were changing. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the GD Goenka group realized that and uh, we started our first state-of-the-art uh, school in uh, Vasan Konj, New Delhi. So the school boasted of uh, various firsts, like the first air-conditioned classes and uh, the first air-conditioned buses with uh, GPS facilities. At that time, there were no Google Maps. So you can imagine uh, the parents' satisfaction when they could see where... Way ahead of time. Yes, we were way ahead of time. And uh, we were also the first ones to introduce mineral water. And uh, we, we were the first school in Delhi to introduce a gymnasium for students with the latest equipment imported from America. Mm -hmm. So all this kind of uh, changed the entire scenario of private education during that time. So moving on to the next one. What was your vision when you, you know, entered into the field of education and how has it evolved over the years? So the GD Gunka University was a logical extension mm -hmm. uh, once we made our mark in the field of education. And uh, we started the university in 2013 with a vision of uh, uh, promoting uh, multidisciplinary and inter interdisciplinary courses within the university. We started off with uh, four schools, namely engineering, management, uh, law, and design. And uh, our uh, thought process was that we should tie up with foreign universities mm -hmm. to get their expertise on board. So with uh, design, we tied up with Politecnico di Milano, which is, the, which is Italy's uh, top-notch design school. And uh, for our uh, culinary programs, we tied up with uh, Le Cordon Bleu, which is uh, France. Uh, a premier uh, hospitality school. Yes. So guest lectures, we have guest lectures from there and our students go there for a semester and uh, study abroad programs. So uh, that was the vision and then, the, then we realized that uh, we had to bridge the gap between industry and academia. So we tied up with various industrial bodies like KPMG teaching into our accounting program, okay. uh, IBM teaching into our uh, computer science program. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, the students get a certificate from uh, these uh, companies mm -hmm. and also internship opportunities. And obviously those internship opportunities translate into final placements. All right. So starting from foreign collaborations to industrial collaborations. That's how we evolved over there. Last but not the least, Nipun, your aim is to make this university at par with the leagues abroad. How do you plan on achieving it? Right. So for any university, uh, for that matter, student satisfaction is the most important. Quality staff is very important. Internationalization is very important. Increasing student diversity. So, for example, for staff, we have we are hiring more than uh, more than most of our staff are PhDs mm -hmm. or pursuing PhDs. Okay. Uh, and uh, we rely heavily on staff training from our international partners. Okay. Uh, where our staff get certified by our international partners on getting trained. Mm -hmm. In terms of the nationalization and uh, student diversity, we have opened an international office now uh, where uh, we are uh, recruiting students from sub-Saharan countries, mm -hmm. from Nepal, Sri Lanka, Vietnam, uh, nearby countries where students not only make uh, friendships but business friendships uh, in the future mm -hmm. and that helps uh, you know, it's more like a c cultural immersion for mm -hmm. the students and uh, I think these are the changes which will help uh, us, uh, you know, make a mark internationally. We wish you all the best with that, Nipun, but before we let you go, we would like to bring in some reactions from your students and faculty. Take a look at what they have to say. It was an experience that every student of design should get. It, it, it's a very good uh, city. Milan, as we know, is the city of design. 
and our university Polytechnico di Milano. So when you enter the university, the vibe of it is very different compared to what we get in India. Primarily, GD Goenka University is very different from the other conventional universities that we offer not the regular courses that what other universities offer. We offer a lot of new age courses. The courses which is futuristic, which is going to make our students not to seek job, but instead create jobs. We have various national and international conferences which are held within the university. And uh, some of these are also co-sponsored by IEEE. So we get to showcase our projects and uh, showcase our research papers over there. And the students, uh, they've uh, won laurels at various national and international uh, conferences. Apart from that, uh, we have activity clubs as well in our college. Joining us further in the conversation is Professor Suku Bhaskaran. Professor Bhaskaran, thank you for taking out time and joining us. It's my pleasure, thank you. To begin with, what is your take on teaching pet pedagogy? And why is it important to let go of old school teaching techniques? Okay, the traditional method of teaching was focused on teaching and not learning. It was from the lecturer, information being sent out to the students. Now, in our classrooms, we are encouraging, we are encouraging greater engagement with the students. So student engagement is critically important. And we teach students to participate through peer-to-peer -peer discussions, students making comments on what the lecturer has said, students asking questions of the lecturer, and there is a lot of learning between and among students. All right. So, uh, Professor Bhaskaran, you know, the quality of any educational institute is based on the quality of its faculty members. So can you talk to us about your team of faculty and what sets them apart from the rest? Two things. Number one, in our recruitment, we are very careful as to who we take. So we take academic staff who we believe have got the potential to adapt to this system of education that we are imparting. That is the ability to analyze, review, critique, and provide evidence-based discourses. That's what the students are required to do. So the faculty must be able to do similar things with these students. So when we recruit, we have a rigorous interview process and we check out whether they're able to do that. Talk to us about the various growth opportunities offered to your faculty members. Okay. We provide ample uh, growth opportunities, both informal and formal. The informal growth opportunities would be, for example, we conduct peer reviews. A, a, a senior faculty would sit in a classroom, listens to how you, listen to how, you, how the person delivers the lectures, and then mentor them. So there's a lot of mentoring and peer-to-peer -peer learning that goes on in this institution. On this note, Professor Bhaskaran, I would like to bring in some reactions from your students. Take a look at what they have to say. All our faculties are very well educated, they're very well informed, and the fact that they have so much experience, it kind of helps me. So the faculty is amazing. Like, even if it's any problem in my academics or in my personal life, I can approach them anytime. I can actually talk to them at any time of the day. They're always there to help me. Hekel is absolutely friendly and they do have a very practical approach towards the course. They just don't stick to the books and the notes. They give us the practical knowledge as well and they are easily approachable. That's all we have time for on this episode of India's Finest Educators. Many thanks for watching and goodbye. Partnered by Times Influence.